Good morning, YouTubers. It's September 19th and 2018, and I just want to do a little super quick video about uh, collecting or investing silver, your, your hard-earned money into silver to protect your dollar's buying power. Um, I have this roll right in here in front of me of junk silver. Hear that? Hear that sound? Yeah, that's silver. I have 20 worn 50 cent pieces. The uh, they're all Walking Liberty and Franklin. So there's no Kennedys in this particular pile. Um, I scaled them and calculated, considering that they're worn. There's a couple good calculators online where you can uh, calculate the melt value of junk silver or whatever gold, and you tell it you know a percentage of that is worn or whatever. Or in my case, I scaled these 20 coins and came up with uh, so many ounces. Oh, I came up with 219 grams. 244 grams of actual weight and then you calculate that times 0.9 you know for your silver content I came up with 219 grams of silver or seven ounces yeah seven ounces of troy it was a like hair over so okay so here's this stack of 20 50 cent pieces that's worth melt value of a hundred dollars give or take a few cents now the point being, okay, think about it, each one of these was worth 50 cents back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, 60s. Um, now they're worth about five bucks. And so if you did the inflation calculation, you actually came out ahead uh, right now because silver will do, will typically keep up with inflation or better. And in this particular case, or better. <laughs> So instead of sticking $100 under your mattress and not being able to buy near $100 worth of stuff 10 years from now, you might only be able to buy $90 worth of stuff. Well, I was like making nine bucks an hour instead of 10 bucks an hour right now, right? Or uh, you could even make more, like I say. You don't do that, and that's one thing I wanna stress. You don't invest in silver and gold to make money. If you make money, that's great. What you really, the, what your mindset should be is, you're buying silver to protect your dollar's buying power. Silver is a commodity. If you could buy coffee or cigarettes or booze or something else, booze may not be a bad idea, by the way. But that would be a good, a good thing to have uh, during an all-out catastrophic situation, huh? <laughs> People would want booze, right? Or bullets or uh, whatever. So, but silver's my choice. And so, uh, I want to also talk real quick about other metals. I have copper, tin, and silver, and a little bit of gold. And uh, I don't know many people that actually stack, as they call it, copper. I like copper, and because uh, again, it's, it's good to feel a tangible asset in my hand um, copper uh, would go up during a war so would tin and nickel I have some nickel and um, not nickels I have actual nickel metal and um, well truth be told it's old French coins that were <laughs> old French coins used to be made of pure nickel and I, so I've stacked those I've got a pretty good little collection of that I wanted to diversify, quote unquote, my little metal portfolio, if you will, by getting three or four different kinds of metal. So I have silver, tin, copper, and nickel. Tin, uh, I think would be, from the hip, I think might be a good choice to alternative to silver if you can't afford silver. But the, the thing is, well, the thing is, tin is, uh, Probably more expensive in a sense because even though tin's only eight or nine bucks a pound right now, maybe nine fifty a pound. I haven't looked today. Um, you won't get it for less than fifteen to twenty dollars a pound anywhere, and uh, unless you're real lucky or you have some connections. Uh, 
tire shops it might have some uh, weights made of, uh, made out of pure tin you can check into that if you have somebody that works you know, a friend that works at a tire shop <coughs> but uh, as a rule of thumb for tin and copper you're going to pay twice three times what it would cost for milk uh, on eBay there's a lot of people selling copper even for let's let's go with a pound for this discussion for 10 12 14 dollars a pound now that just blows my mind because copper is under three dollars a pound right now so personally I try to look for deals that are around the six to eight dollar range and depend even then it depends on what it actually is uh, if I if I'm gonna buy it um, I happen to have bought some really really nice hand poured copper ingots recently from a guy on eBay and I'm getting them for about seven to eight dollars a pound and I consider that fair I do because you know uh, if you look anywhere on eBay you can get you can get some deals that are cheaper than that you can actually find copper for three or four bucks a pound I've got some of that too but it's scrap uh, pieces from like thin sheets of copper where people have made crafts and maybe wind chimes or uh, any home decor items whatever and so here's all these weird shaped screwy sharp chunks and bits of copper scrap that are really really hard to deal with if you want to resell them and they're they, and they're because they're they're odd shaped and, and, and bent up and everything else they're in a in a big box right and they they take up so much room because you can't you can't just like squish them down you know for lack of better terms you can't just squish them down and compact them there there's no there's just a pain in the butt to deal with so I won't ever buy those again but I'm, I'm gonna get rid of them by just taking them to a recycler once copper goes up someday which during a war or something like that then or if China started buying the hell out of copper I think that's what that's probably what drove copper up to about five bucks a pound a few years ago five six seven eight years ago whatever it was uh, that's actually what caught my interest in copper but then I also looked at tin I got excited about tin because tin's got a industrial a certain amount of industrial demand like silver that's another thing about silver by the way silver's industrial demand keeps going up and up um, and right now silver is a, if you look at it one way silver is seriously undervalued right now at $14 a pound but if you look at it other ways, it's not. Um, there's there's things to consider when you're when you're talking about metals. First of all, copper and silver and gold are all kind of found together. So a lot of cop a lot of gold mines just come across silver as a byproduct. They don't, they're not mining for silver; they're mining for gold, and they get silver by accident, if you will, and that helps. Uh, recoup costs and make up for costs associated with their actual gold mining you know it costs X amount of dollars to pull this stuff out of the ground right well when the demand is it makes sense to me anyways when the demand is high for a metal and these gold mines silver mines kick it in kick it in the butt to, to pump out more ore because of demand they're gonna have to hire more people maybe buy a new piece of machinery whatever that's gonna I have to assume that's going to make the metal itself go up, you know, trickle down effect, if you will, whatever. Somebody's got to pay for it. And so, uh, conversely, when there's no demand for the metal or, or the economy's doing really well like it is right now under Trump, and Obama, Obama set it up and Trump's running with it and making it even better, uh, that's my opinion. I don't want to get into politics, okay? I don't want to discuss politics. I just... I shouldn't have even said that, but the fact is the economy is doing pretty darn good right now for whatever reason. And uh, uh, so metal demand is low and there's really no big war going on. So metal demand is, is low. Um, in other economic situations, it'll go up. Uh, typically, when your stock market's doing great, metals are doing crappy and vice versa when the stock market's doing crappy your metals will go up that's why people talk about you know always put a, like five or ten percent of your investment into metal don't put it just in the stock market 
let me touch on that real quick too the stock market in my opinion if you work for a company that has a 401k especially if they match jump on that at least do the minimum to get the maximum match from the company don't throw that away because overall in my opinion the stock market is a is a huge gamble um, if you do your homework and you know what you're doing you can make good money don't get me wrong but by the same token some people get crazy about it and lose a lot of money too you picked the wrong company because you thought oh well joe told me that buying marijuana stocks was a good thing to do right now guess what a lot of people lost money on marijuana stocks in the last decade oh yeah oh yeah because it's like the dot-com bubble you know what happened there right people went nuts and buying up uh domain names and stuff and tried to start a dot com you know an online store it just it was a big hype a bunch of hype in the beginning and then finally the dust settled and it wasn't quite as lucrative for everybody or for those that thought initially that they could do well and so people lost money <coughs> Um, three companies that I like to tell people if you're going to invest in the stock market get Johnson & Johnson Home Depot and XPO Logis Logistics which is a trucking company I worked for Conway for 12 years and I watched it go from a Consolidated Freightways non-union side project to the world's premier LTL business model in 12 years and so when XPO bought them out I read up okay well wow somebody knows something so long story short uh brad jacobs the man that invested in in, in conway and, and used his money to buy uh, X, uh conway and turn it into to a company he already had xpo uh the guy if you read about the guy brad jacobs the guy is like he's got the midas touch in business and he's turned a bunch of companies into huge corporations and made a lot of money and so I, I find it exciting to tell people about XPO logistics because think about it at exponentially the trucking industry has grown through the years and the rails doing well as well uh, but I, I think in the future big rigs are not going to be going into the inner city so much they'll have to stay out of them because even now, there's by law, there's um, a, a big rig's only allowed allowed to go like a few miles off the freeway, and that's why companies like XPO Logistics and, that have a, a really small city tractor and a 28 foot trailer, they do the the bulk of the of the inner city stuff, you know, because big rigs can't get. I mean, you'll see them. I've I'm, I'm in a big rig. I, I've taken them into cities and delivered, um, but I think in the future. Uh, either between the, the cost of fuel and the and the pollution that trucks generate and just the population growing and stuff that that it would make sense that smaller trucks will be doing the bulk of the even more of the bulk of the work for inner city delivery. Well, XPO Logistics is is like I said is the premier LTO business model. And they got what it takes to get the stuff done and to roll with the changes. They got the money to back them up. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I just looked it up a few days ago. XTO Logistics, uh, if you'd bought their stock, I think five years ago, you would have doubled your money by now. You can check on that, don't quote me. But I know it was, it was astronomical. It made my jaw drop. I was like, holy crap. I wish I had bought some XTO Logistics stocks. Um, Anyways, okay, so moving on. Back to metals. Metals is a good thing. Bird in the hand. Um, you can pick up a little bit or a lot every week or whatever. Just be careful who you buy from on eBay. Uh, copper, you shouldn't spend more than six to six to eight dollars a pound uh, on eBay. And like I meant, I touched on, you should get ingots or bar form. Don't get wire, old old wire, old motors, scrap, sheet metal kind of scraps like I've gotten. Um, some people like to buy our actual pennies, the United States pennies, 
you can find those on eBay too. Buy, you can buy them 30, 50 pounds, whatever. Um, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Uh, it just seems like a big, bigger pain in the rear to deal to deal with a bunch of pennies because you got to keep keep them counted and, and rolled up and stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I just, I've never really had the desire to look into it. Um, I, I like my ingots <laughs> for copper, so uh, I guess you know buying pennies would be just like me buying these halves, except that there's a, it's, they're, these are made of a metal that's worth a lot more. So each to his own. But do something. Put your money into some kind of metals because that way you can set it aside and on a rainy day if you need it, it's there. You just run it to the coin store and get your money and go take care of business. So. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope it, everything makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll, I'll get to them when I can. I am a truck driver. I am on the road. I'm on the road right now. Uh, uh, well, I'm in the sleeper, but I mean, I'm out every all, all week and I, I'm, then I'm home on the weekend for 34 hours or so and back on the road. So I'll try to answer any questions when I can. All right, uh, happy investing and do ask questions. Uh, I, I have enough knowledge to where I should be able to help you or at least point you in the right direction. And um, I just want to see people do what I'm 55 and I wish I had started this years ago because I had no idea that my job, my this the economy I'm in, society is as it is, would be all this that it is now. I had no idea 30, 40 years ago. I had no idea. I thought everything would be sunshine the whole time. Now here I am struggling to put a few bucks aside. So if you're in your early 20s and stuff, listen to this video. Ask questions to your friends and family. Definitely think about stocks. Um, just be careful when you buy stocks. Um, if you buy the wrong thing, you can lose your ass. And that's why I say Johnson & Johnson, Home Depot, and XBO. If I'm not mistaken, they all pay a dividend, and they're all uh, growth, growth. They're growth and in income stocks. They're they're going to go up in value, and they pay a dividend. How can you go wrong? You just you just set it. You know, if you buy these stocks, you set it up to reinvest the dividends, which helps build your your money quicker. It'll be slow at first, but 10, 20 years from now, you'll be you'll be seeing dividends that, that might even pay your rent, <laughs> just depending on how you do it and wh who you pick and how aggressive you've been. You know, literally, you can live off the dividends later on in years. If you're in your 20s now and you pick the right stocks, and assuming we don't get nuked to shit in the next decade, um, you can live off dividends later on, or at least your, uh, your, uh, not your, uh, not the money that you actually put in, but the money that you've earned and generated from the money you put in. I forget the word, dang it. But anyways, yeah, uh, don't. Don't depend on any kind of retirement, except what you can do yourself. That includes getting that matching from the company I mentioned, you know. Um, there used to be pensions. Pensions are a, a thing of the past. You've got to depend on this 401k, as it were, and uh, that's, not, that's not such a bad thing. If you don't want to stay with a company for more than four or five years and you say, you know what, I'm done with these guys, I'm going to go try these guys, well, at least now with the 401k, you can take that with you. Your retirement goes with you now. That's the only good thing about the 401k that I can think of, other than, than companies also match. If you put in a buck, they'll give you 50 cents. That's a damn good thing, and you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. And if you're an XPO employee or a... Uh, some of the other better companies. Um, to me, the XVO would be the best, but like if you work for FedEx or UPS or something and, and the company gives you stock for your matching in your 401k, keep it. Um, certain companies will do great in the future. Uh, XVO, FedEx, UPS, uh, YRC might do real well. Uh, any of the, the LTO, the big LTO companies, because like I said, inner city trucking is gonna be paramount in the future. There's so much crap being bought online now that it's getting delivered by the, the Postal Service or YRC, you know, 
yellow red or yellow roadway or uh, FedEx or UPS or XPO Logistics. All right, I'll shut up. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the video and do some research. Invest your money somewhere. Bye.